If you'd like to make neat stretchy neckline like this one instead of the rigid cumbersome classic version, the method described in this tutorial will quickly become your favorite. To see how it works, we'll use simple uh, shaping instructions that tell us to work to the center three stitches, then bind off these stitches and finish two sides of the neckline separately by binding off two stitches once, one stitch once, and then work on the remaining stitches for four rows. It really helps to mark those center stitches with locking stitch markers or safety pins, but you can easily do without those stitch markers as well. So with the right side of the work facing you, we'll start shaping by uh, making the right side of the neckline. We work to those center stitches and because my swatch is made in stockinette stitch, I'm knitting stitches, but it could be any stitch pattern you like. So we work until we get to the first marker, if you mark those center stitches, or simply count the stitches and stop whenever you get to those stitches. Uh, we are supposed to bind off these stitches, but we won't do that because we are not binding off any stitches. We want to keep the stitches open, but we also want to avoid the holes right here where we would need to turn the work. And to prevent these holes, we're going to make an extra stitch. And we do it by knitting it from the top part of the stitch that is below the first stitch on the left needle. So we insert the tip of the right needle from the bottom up under the top part of the stitch that is below the first stitch on the left needle, like this. Then we place the stitch on the left needle and we knit the stitch, just the usual way, like this. Now we can turn the work. This row is a rest row. We don't do any shaping here. We simply work all stitches in pattern. In my case, it's going to be purling, but like I said, it could be any stitch pattern you like. Turn your work. Now we've got to the second row of shaping, but because before we move on, uh, let's spread the stitches on the needle to find the twin stitches, the stitches that we formed in the previous shaping row when we made that extra stitch. And those twin stitches, when you spread the stitches on your needle, you will clearly see them. They stick together. They are right here. So these twin stitches are our marks. So we're going to look for those twin stitches every time we need to uh, shape another section of the neckline. So right now in this shaping row, we need to bind off two stitches. And that means that using this method, we're going to work all stitches until we get to two stitches before those twin stitches. So I'm going to knit all stitches until I get to that point. And that's going to be pretty soon because I have just a few stitches on my needle. So see, we've got the twin stitches over here and I still need to make or to knit one stitch until I get to the two stitches before the twin stitches. And then we do the same thing. We lift this top part of the stitch below uh, the first stitch on the left needle, put it on the left needle and knit a new stitch from that stitch and turn the work. And then we enjoy the rest row when we simply work all stitches in whatever stitch pattern is in your project. In the next shaping row, we are supposed to bind off one stitch. And that means that we look at the work again, find the twin stitches, not the first ones, but the ones that we created in the previous shaping row, and work until we get to one stitch before those twin stitches. And that means knitting three stitches uh, for me because my swatch is so small. So twin stitches, one stitch in front of those stitches, and that means that I'm ready to, uh, to do the shaping, to turn the work. Uh, and I do it in exactly the same way. So I simply pick up the stitch, lift it on the left needle, and knit a new stitch from that picked up strand, and turn the work. Now comes the rest row, which would be really short. 
for me and then we would move on to the next shaping row which is very interesting because in this shaping row we don't have any decreases to make we simply work even for the next four rows and that means that we work all stitches until we get to the twin stitches the ones that we created in the previous shaping row they would be right here and then with the classic conventional method we would simply turn the work and start working back and forth on this little piece but that would leave the edge of the neckline naked and we cannot do that we need open stitches right along the edge that's why we make a stitch again and again we do it the same way so we lift this strand place it on the left needle and make a stitch from it and then turn the work and work the second row of uh, working evenly that's the uh, rest row we don't do any special maneuvers to those uh, stitches and then we turn the work and that's another shaping row where we don't make any decreases so we do exactly the same thing as we did in the previous shaping row so we work to the twin stitches then we lift that strand, knit a stitch from it, and turn the work. And this is our last row, the fourth row of working uh, even on the remaining stitches, the stitches of the shoulder. And now we are ready to finish the uh, shaping of the right side of the, uh, of the neckline and move to the left side of the neckline but first we need to bind off the stitches of the uh, of the shoulder and we start by doing exactly that so we bind off all stitches until we get to the twin stitches that is right here then we lift the strand again make a stitch from that strand and bind one more stitch now the stitches of the shoulder are bound off and we need to transfer the work to the left side of the neckline and we do it by knitting all stitches through the back loop so we knit all stitches of the right side of the neckline and the stitches at the center of the project those that were supposed to be bound off first so we knit all of these stitches through the back loop so we stop here and look at the work see all the stitches of the right side of the neckline are knitted through the back loop as well as all the stitches at the center of the work and now we came to the stitches of the left part of the neckline and we're going to work on these stitches from now on first one thing we do we work them as usual through the front loop again i'm working in stocking and stitch so i'm knitting all stitches but it could be any stitch pattern you like and then turn your work so the shaping happens in exactly the same way uh, over here with one difference we are doing the shaping rows on the wrong side of the work and that means instead of knitting those extra stitches we're going to be purling them and here's how it happens so we work to the center stitches first and then we're going to make one extra stitch from the top of the stitch that is below the first stitch on the left needle so before we do anything we bring the yarn to the front of the work and then we pick the strand again from the bottom up like this and place it on the left needle so that the right needle is at the front of the left needle like this we don't even take the right needle out of the stitch because we're going to purl it so simply wrap the tip of the right needle with the yarn and purl the stitch and slip the strand off the left needle and then turn your work the next row is a rest row so we simply work all stitches in pattern in my case it means knitting all stitches to the end of the row in the next shaping row we're gonna bind off two stitches from the neck edge but before we do that let's take a look at the work and when you spread the stitches on the needle you will notice 
that the twin stitches here are not as obvious as the twin stitches on the right side of the neckline. So we can clearly see pretty much the uh, turning stitch that it is longer than the rest of the stitches. It's right over here. But it doesn't stick together with the stitch, it's brother stitch, because we made it in a different way. So we simply see that stitch and we know that the stitch that is in front of it, that's the twin stitch. So we treat these two stitches as twin stitches. And in this shaping row, we're going to bind off two stitches. And instead, using this method, we're going to work to two stitches before the twin stitches. So these are the twin stitches. So we're going to stop when we get over here. Again, work in any stitch pattern you like. In my case, it's going to be purling. And once we get here, we make another stitch from the top of the stitch that is below the post stitch on the left needle. So we bring the yarn to the front, pick that strand, place it on the left needle, purl it, and confidently turn the work. Work the rest row before we move to the next shaping row. In this row, we'll uh, bind off, we are supposed to kind of bind off one stitch, which we're not going to do. We're going to find those twin stitches, and now you can tell where they are, right? So this is this long stitch, it's bigger than the, longer than the rest of the stitches, and we know that the stitch that is in front of it, that's its brother stitch. So we uh, determined our twin stitches, and now we work until we get to one stitch before those twin stitches. So that means purling three stitches in my case. Here we go. And then we make another extra stitch the same way and turn the work. Work all stitches in pattern and move to the next shaping row. This row has no actual shaping. We don't, we're not supposed to decrease anything. So we simply work until we get to those twin stitches that are right here, the long stitch and the one that is in front of it. So that means purling three stitches in my swatch. And then we make the extra stitch, by purling it from the uh, top of the stitch below the left, uh, the first stitch on the left needle and turn the work. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing in the next shaping row. So again, we find those twin stitches that are right here. See the long stitch and the one next to it. Purl to that spot and make another stitch from over here. The shaping is done and in the next row we're gonna bind off the stitches of the shoulder. But first we slip the first stitch from the left needle to the right needle, we do it pro-wise, because this stitch is the second part of the twin stitches and it belongs with the stitches of the neck and does not belong with the stitches of the shoulder. And after we uh, slip that stitch we just bind off the rest of the stitches on the left needle that those stitches will make up the left shoulder of the project. And now let's take a look at the neckline. So the shaping is done. The neckline looks very nice and as you see it does not have any imperfections along the whole length of the neckline and there is a set of open stitches just waiting to be turned into any kind of neckband, a hood or whatever else you decide to add to your sweater. All the whys and hows of this method are explained in great detail in an ebook that you can get at tenroseday.com slash stretchy dash neckline. Happy knitting my friend, I'll talk to you in the next tutorial.